Mary, thanks for joining us today. Well, you're very welcome. Happy to be here. So Mary, your pioneering work in the concept of slip flow has created a lot of excitement in the HPLC community. But I think a lot of people probably don't really understand it. Can you explain what it is? Yeah, I can explain. I'll try to be as brief as I can because it's, it's, a lot of people think it's very complicated, but I, I think it's really simple. And so when, when we look at, when we learn chromatography and we read the textbooks, we always draw a flow profile as being parabolic where the parabola goes, the velocity goes to zero at the walls. And in reality, that rarely happens. If you think about why a fluid would stop at the walls, it's because the molecules in the fluid have a strong attractive interaction, hydrogen bonding, for example, to the walls. And that's only the case when, if you have water, for example, the walls are very hydrophilic. So there are OH groups on the surface. And so you have to stop in order to hydrogen bond if you're a water molecule. But in reverse phase chromatography, the walls are made of hydrocarbon. And water has a very weak interaction. And so it doesn't really stop at the walls. For chromatographic materials, which, which are on the micrometer scale, you can't really notice that the velocity is non-zero at the wall. But once you get down to the nanoscale, where the fluid in the middle of a channel, where I'm talking about a channel between particles, the fluid in the middle of a channel is in close communication with the fluid at the wall, then you start to notice the non-zero velocity at the wall. And that non-zero wall velocity is what is slip flow. And so it's called slip flow because the fluid at the wall is slipping along the wall rather than sticking. So people in fluid dynamics always call it either slip or no slip. They don't use the word stick, even though you might think no slip would be stick. But uh, fluids typically uh, would slip at the wall. And so when, when we work with submicrometer particles, we can easily see this, this, um, this non-zero wall velocity in the form of a flow enhancement. And so we get, um, for half micron particles, for example, with water and a hydrocarbon surface, we get a five-fold flow enhancement because of this non-zero wall velocity. So does this phenomenon only occur when you have very small particles? The phenomenon is always there, but you, you can't see it. It's not a significant effect. Okay. And so in some of your recent work, you focused particularly on the analysis of slip flow when you're analyzing proteins. Why mm -hmm. proteins in particular? Well, we got interested in proteins a long time ago because it's a, we viewed it as a big unsolved problem. Um, proteins are, are hard to separate because they're big, so they have, they have low diffusion coefficients. In chromatography, of course, diffusion is your friend. It's, it's what allows you to have narrow peaks and, and high flow rates. But for proteins, they're big, and so you have to slow, you have to, sorry, flow slowly, and, uh, and so you don't get very, uh, very sharp peaks. It's especially um, a problem with proteins um, doing efficient separations, or it's especially a need, I should say, because proteins are heterogeneous. When you, when you buy a protein and you think it's one thing, like lysozyme, for example, it's actually a mixture of many uh, post-translationally modified forms of lysozyme. There's also degradation products. There's other impurities. And so uh, a, a, you know, a, a single protein that you buy is actually a, a very complex mixture. And, and in reverse phase, these things come out all very close together. And so if you're doing LCMS, you'll see a, a complicated mass spectrum. And so you need, to have, you need to have much better resolution than people presently have. So we viewed it as an unsolved problem. And so that, that's what we were initially interested in anyway. And, uh, and so it turns out to be um, you know, a very happy coincidence that slip flow uh, today, with today's technology, works uh, is most compatible with proteins because today's instruments have limited um, pressure limited pump pressure, and, uh, and you need to have a high velocity or else you'll get a diffusion, a longitudinal diffusion contribution to the peak width. But because proteins diffuse slowly, you, you can use today's pumps and have plenty of flow rate for a, for a good efficient separation. So what kinds of results have you seen when you've been applying the concept of slip flow to the analysis of proteins or even particularly large ones like monoclonal antibodies? Yeah, so we're especially interested in monoclonal antibodies. It's, it represents a very fast-growing uh, sector of the pharmaceutical industry, and, uh, and the pharmaceutical industry needs to establish purity 
of the monoclonal antibodies. And, and so, so that's been one of the things we've been looking at. And what we see is, is uh, with capillaries, where we have a limited contribution from the instrument, we see just you know, tremendous improvements in, in peak width, you know, really, really sharp peaks and, and really high resolution. We're starting to work with stainless steel columns because that's actually what the pharmaceutical industry uses. And you, know, you take a little bit of a beating on the instrument, some dispersion from the instrument, dispersion from the column hardware, but we do also get really good results with, with stainless steel columns, better than commercial columns currently. And I've started a company that's commercializing this biovidria. So, so we are, we are uh, now sending out um, prototypes for beta testing, so nice stainless steel columns that perform really well, good reproducibility from column to column, really good resolution.